by Douglas Murray of the think tank the Henry Jackson Society and by the Labour MP Rushanara Ali. Welcome to both of you. Rushanara Ali, is there anything realistically that the West, the European Union, the British... This was bound to be an interesting discussion on the Israel-Gaza conflict. It aired on the BBC Two channel on July 22, 2015, as the Israeli military rallied to destroy tunnels built by Hamas. And in the studio, we had a Labour MP Russia Nara Ali. Of course, Douglas Murray was on hand to air his views. Then we also had Trevor Phillips, a third dispassionate voice. We need the European Union and including the British government to work together uh, to show leadership and also to act as an honest broker and what we've seen. The anchor woman started with Ali and she voiced exactly what was on everyone's mind. When Ali gladly took the bait, what exactly is the West doing to de-escalate the situation in Gaza? Mind you, the conflict had always been protracted. So, Ali pointed to a lack of leadership on the part of the US and Europe. One which had also been foisted and appropriated, but now seemed dormant. Um, some 600 people are now dead, mainly civilians, uh, 100,000 seeking refuge, and we need the European Union. Ali further cited the numbers. At that point, 600 Palestinians were dead, and about 100,000 were displaced. Separately, an independent poll suggested that since the beginning of the conflict, many years ago till date, only 60 Israelis in total had died compared to the Palestinian side, which has suffered countless casualties. Ali's point being the feud was disproportionate. Strong voice in recognizing, of course, Israel needs to maintain its security, but its reaction and response is not proportionate, and we need the European Union, including the British government, to speak up. Before Douglas was plugged in, Ali also made a case for Israeli's flagrant disregard for humanitarian law under the guise of defending its territory. To complicate things further, Western nations were being hypocritical about the atrocities being committed by Israel. Ali suggested that for decency's sake, the leadership of the West ought to represent that voice of reason. No, not at all. Um, apart from anything else, the uh, very muted response, and indeed in many cases a very encouraging response for Israel from the international community, is I think testament to the fact that it is playing not just by the rules, but by the most stringent rules imaginable. The reason why uh, the casualties exist in the Gaza is obviously because Israel is trying as an operational objective to stop Hamas and other jihadist groups from firing rockets mm. into Israel. In order to do that... On his part, Douglas insisted that Israel is in the right, and as a consequence, the West or anyone else for that matter couldn't really fault the way they were going about the conflict. Douglas did also suggest that the Israelis were being careful enough, but Hamas was literally throwing bodies at them. Of course, this allegation is unverified. So that's the first point. As for how this is to be stopped, I think there's a very important thing that we do not, in, in the international community does not simply perpetuate this conflict mm -hmm. in trying to stop Israel from achieving the operational objective of stopping the rocket fire. The international, right. This is how this is the third All time. Right. Essentially, Douglas was siding with Israel and absolving the West of any complicity. Apparently, the objective was to locate and destroy the tunnels, and until that was achieved, the conflict must be allowed to run its course. But in hindsight, was this singular military campaign a success? On the contrary, it didn't change anything, and history has spoken for itself. Well, Ed Miliband has made it absolutely clear that uh, the, the incursion, the ground incursion, he said this only yesterday uh, as well, the ground incursion is not uh, one that is supported. Uh, we recognise Israel's uh, uh, demand, as Ed Miliband has said, to... Um, uh, for its security, but its response has been disproportionate. Yeah, could, and the point about international leadership is if you look at what David Cameron said in 2010, he described the blockade of Gaza as an open prison. On the subject of a voice, leaders like Ed Miliband and David Cameron had once condemned the blockade of Gaza. David Cameron called it an open prison and Miliband especially faulted the ground insurgents by the Israeli military. A dozen of these, the rockets still continue yes. to come yes. into Israel. So the argument could be, are these Palestinians, innocent Palestinian civilians, losing their lives for nothing? The Israelis are not achieving their aims. The rockets continue from Hamas and, all right, you are saying that... And what about the innocent rocket fire from Gaza? That seems to be a sticking point. And might we also ask, what is the Israeli Iron Dome, which was installed in 2011, meant for? 
Could we argue that there is presently no need for the elaborate military operations that Israelis insist on? There's three major occasions now gone in. Now, the problem with this is that the international community tends to allow Israel some weeks in order to achieve the operational objective. Mm. They're and going then, to lose then, international support, exactly. aren't they, now, the, Israel? The, 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 and the crucial thing, just to add on this, is it is very important that Israel is allowed to win. At Douglas doubled down on his argument by saying the West is not the devil here. Usually, Israel was given some leeway to achieve their objective. And if this became prolonged, or if they stepped out of line, then they would usually lose their support of the West. But in reality, that was hardly ever the case. The dog here. Um, the truth of the matter is that the people of Gaza actually voted for Hamas. Mm -hmm. And they voted knowing what would happen. Hamas has been very clear. It has no intention of, pay of making peace with Israel. So which way forward? Was there a solution on the horizon, whether it be military or political? Trevor came in at this point, his argument being that peace looked forever elusive under the present conditions. On the one hand, the people of Gaza voted unanimously for Hamas, the same group who have sworn to annihilate Israel over its protracted oppression of Palestinians. So actually, you know, this is a horrible, cruel thing to say. This is a result of a democratic outcome. And by the way, the, the, the really bigger issue here is Egypt, because that's what's really made the big difference here. So I think... And the, Egypt is, worry also, is also worried about being well, on the border the, the, with Gaza. The peculiar thing is, Israel and Egypt, relative to Gaza, are in exactly the same position mm. right now. Yes. So I think that... The Trevor also roped Egypt into the problem. Geographically, the Gaza Stripe is wedged between Israel and Egypt. When Israel and its backers appropriated the land in 1967, Palestinians were essentially given a quit notice. The Israeli-Jordan border on the adjacent side got the West Bank. However, the Israeli-Egypt border became the biggest concentration camp in the world. So what is it that they want? I hope what Trevor's not saying is that by voting for Hamas, those who voted were um, in some way uh, are now uh, deserve or you know the punishment collective punishment that is now being espoused let me finish let me finish but the, but, but the, you know, that's not, not what I'm saying have... the anchor woman really wanted to know what exactly Hamas hoped to achieve from all of this mind you there was the hard line stance of the Hamas leadership to deal with Ali countered that notion by citing the fact that there was a real and unnecessary suffering in Gaza that was directly linked to the Israeli occupation. At best, Hamas only represented a reactive response to the oppression of Palestinians in Gaza. Her point, you're saying that they are living under occupation. There seems to be a bit of, an, a bit of amnesia here about the history of what's happening in that region and the fact that Palestinians don't have a state. They have, you know, lived under occupation. They've lived under attack. And what we need... But it seems all the negotiators have settled for a two-state solution in principle. But then again, Gaza will always look and feel like a refugee camp by its very makings, when compared to the West Bank. And Israel has and will always maintain the status quo, if only for the sake of it. Not least, the leaders of Hamas in Gaza, who cannot help themselves, but continue to fan the flames of resistance. The, problem, the, pro the real problem Nobody here is the agenda is now being controlled by people who don't want peace, whether it is the On settlers the, and so, with, yeah. uh, West Bank, or right. it's Hamas. Right. Trevor rounded off the conversation with a salient point to which everyone agreed. And that is, the fate of the peace process has been hijacked by entities who don't necessarily have the best interest of everyone at heart. Trevor referred to them as gangs. They were either Israeli settlers who constantly encroached and built on Palestinian lands or opposing Hamas militants. We would like to know your thoughts on this. What are your suggestions as to how best to handle Palestine? Tell us about your ideas in the comments section below.